Oh, my dog heard that too. She's very curious. Uh, oh, perfect timing on my dog. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. That's all We're just right. waiting for mom to hear. <laughs> that's how we know we're on Zoom if there are pets. That's exactly. Who's mine right now? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, greetings out there in Facebook land, everybody. I am Jonathan Hout, the executive director of our nonprofit at Conroy Literary Center. Joined slightly off screen by my canine co-host all of a sudden here. That's uh, Mommy who's hanging out with me. Uh, this is day 1147 of our five-day Low Country Book Club convention. This is actually day four. Um, and I am thrilled to have this remarkable group of leaders and superheroes from our book club community come join us and tell us a little bit about what they do and how both readers and writers can benefit from all of that. Uh, this is really exciting for me because these are all groups that I've been affiliated with in one way or another and folks who just continue to impress me with all of the heart and love they give to readers and writers out there with every single thing they do. So we have with us representing the Pulpwood Queens Book Club, Mandy Haynes, and remind me where you are joining us from, Mandy. I am in Fernandina Beach, Florida. Yes, beautiful, beautiful area down there. Mandy is the executive director of the Pulpwood Queens. Uh, she is also the author of two outstanding Southern books, Walking the Wrong Way Home and Sharp as a Serpent's Tooth. And uh, she has recently taken on a big initiative, a big new initiative, the Reading Nation magazine that I definitely want to talk to you about as well. Also with us tonight, uh, a friend of the Conroy Center and somebody we've gotten to Zoom with a couple times before, Sue Peterson. Hey, Sue, from Sue's Reading Neighborhood. Hello. Where, where are you Zooming in from, Sue? I'm in Shirts, Texas, which is near San Antonio. Uh, and Sue and I met by virtue of the Pulpwood Queens Book Club. Too. So already there's a wonderful connective thread yes. being formed there. Uh, Sue was last with us uh, when my teenage protege, Holland Perryman, and I got to be interviewed by Sue and Sue's Reading Neighborhood, which was tremendous fun for us. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was. We still talk about that. <laughs> that's the interview Holland can show to her grandparents. That's uh, that's how she oh. describes that one. That's the grandparents friendly interview. <laughs> OK, well, that's good. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that means something. Uh, yes. Uh, joining us internationally tonight, a friend and supporter of our Conroy Center, who is sometimes with us in Beaufort, but definitely is not so tonight, <laughs> Susie McMahon. Susie, where are you at for everybody watching? Hi, everybody. I am um, streaming with you from Mykonos in, the Gre uh, in Greece. It's um, 1.05 a.m., and I'm so happy to be with all of you uh, this evening, this morning, whatever time it is. <laughs> Susie has been very heroic in, in making time to do this. I have not asked her if she got up early or stayed up late because it's that hour that can kind of go either way, but, uh, but she is with us and I really appreciate that. Susie's done some wonderful work creating a book club seemingly out of thin air and spotlighting so many friends of our Conroy Center. And we've got some in-person events coming up uh, with Susie as well that I hope we get to talk to. And last but most certainly not least, uh, joining us from California, Tina Hogan Grant. Tina is also a phenomenal author in addition to everything else she does in celebrating uh, other writers as well, author of the Sabella series and the Tammy Mellows trilogy, and the daughter of a, of a well-known writer to those of us who uh, follow and appreciate the genre, which I hope she'll say a little bit more about as well. Tina, thank you so much for joining us. Could you tell us a little bit about where you are, meaning the, the home you're in? Uh, well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am in a small mountain community in California, Fraser Park. And yes, this home behind me is what we built ourselves with our bare hands, my husband and I, and uh, we love it. It's, you know, but like I was saying earlier, you only build a house once. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been an educational Zoom already. That's an important lesson to learn, <laughs> I think. 
So uh, since our Low Country Book Club convention is made possible this year and indeed in previous years by the generosity of the Pulpwood Queens, I thought we would uh, go with Mandy first to tell us a little bit about who you are and how you entered into the world of the Pulpwood Queens, and then we'll kind of pick it up from there. So, so Mandy, how did you get indoctrinated into the Pulpwood Queen Nation? Well, how, okay, uh, before I became the executive director, I, um, well, my first book, I just published my first book, or it was about to come out, and um, some of my friends and mentors were like, you need to join the Pulpwood Queens. I, and I was so embarrassed that I didn't know about Kathy. Like, I, like you know, so this was three years ago. And I, when I've heard, you know, researched, I'm like, how did I not know about this w woman and what she's done? Um, and they were, Pulpwood, they were Pulpwood Queen authors. And it's just so funny how it's that community of, um, I don't know. It's like everybody just, they, you know, uh, pulling everybody in and pulling everybody up. Um, so yeah, so I just, I sent in my first book, uh, hoping it would be get read, you know, and it, it was picked as a bonus book. So that's how I, um, got started. And then I volunteered at the first Zoomathon, the first virtual girlfriends weekend, just cause Kathy, you know, it was the first one she'd done. She didn't know how it was going to work. And I said, I just sent her email. I said, well, let me help you however I can, you know whatever I can do, um, just so you can take a bathroom break, <laughs> you know, or whatever. <laughs> and we had so much fun and I really got to know all the authors. And so then she asked me if I want to be the executive director. And I was like, shoot, yeah, I'm <laughs> proud to do this. This is so much fun. So I mentioned uh, that was for your first book. So that's Walking the Wrong Way Home. That was what was collected as the bonus book. It would be a shame to mention the title and not talk about that book for <laughs> Andy, given the audience of readers that we have. So can you tell us a little bit about Walking the Wrong Way Home? Well, it's a collection of short stories and they're all very Southern. They're set in the state of Tennessee from, from the East to the West, Middle Tennessee. Um, oh, I don't know. It's a, I like to say it's a, it's a collection of stories that, um, are for saints, sinners, and everyone in between. <laughs> I like that. That's that's nice. So you you entered Pulpwood Queen Nation as an author, uh, which is a way a lot of folks come in, and then they stay in as readers. Uh, they realize that there's a place for them in that capacity as well. So could you tell us maybe a little more about uh, how folks can participate in Pulpwood Queen? Sort of what the the overarching mission and character of it of it is. What well, started as a um, book club, you know, like over 20 years ago when Kathy went to a book club, if you heard the story and um, she was so excited. And when she left, she said, oh, I'll be back next month. And the woman said, oh no, honey, we didn't invite you. And she said, well, I'll start my own book club. And it started with six members. And then now it's like over, I think over 800 chapters all over the world. Like, um, so she's, She's just, well, she's such a vibrant, like energetic personality and she loves reading. I mean, it's just all about how, you know, reading saved her, you know, it's, and, and all of us, um, you know, when we we're little, from the time we we're little, uh, you could escape in a book, you know, even if you didn't have anything bad to escape from, but you could still, it was just a way to get away and open up your world. Um, so that's kind of, I think, Kathy's main thing still today is like, just she so wants everybody to share that love and of, of books, of reading. And, but with the pandemic, we've really ramped up the author side of the book club. I mean, she's always promoted authors. Um, and it's kind of, that it's just kind of morphed well, it's still the same. We still have the great book club, and you know, you know um, we have a lot of readers, you know, but, but we've really been working to promote the authors that that are the Pulpwood Queen and Timber Guy authors. So. It's a remarkable resource for connecting writers to readers as well. We have a Pulpwood Queens chapter here in Beaufort. They'll actually be participating uh, first thing tomorrow in the Low Country Book Club convention 
as well. Uh, and so that'll be available virtually and uh, they'll be doing it in person at the Technical College of the Low Country talking about one of Pat Conroy's book, his books, his last book published actually, Low Country Art. But that chapter came into existence because Kathy Murphy came down to a previous Low Country Book Club convention and was such a dynamo. She just inspired people immediately and there was a, a group of friends here in Buford who said, oh, we're definitely going to do that. And, you know, a month or two later, there they were, in the newest chapter of the Pulpwood Queens. Oh. There's one just up the coast from us in Charleston, too. There are a lot of very active clubs in and around where we are here in Buford. And it's phenomenal to see how much the club means to those women, oh. how much of the club oh. is above and beyond talking about books. It's, it's really about creating a community where readers and women readers in particular uh, have this sort of safe space to, to engage with one another, to share their stories, to seek help, to find help. It becomes all of those things as well. And that's very much the spirit uh, with which Kathy founded the group. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've been a part of uh, Girlfriends Weekend, which I would love to have you explain. So, uh, so perhaps I don't have to. Uh, <laughs> might be better if you do it. But it's phenomenal experience as well, as Sue knows, because yeah. she's been the one also. So can you tell us a little bit about that, Mandy? Uh, it was virtual this year, and I understand it's going to be virtual next year as well. It is going to be, yeah, the 2022 is going to be virtual again. Just we want to make sure that everybody's safe. You know, we just want to keep everybody safe. Um, but I am embarrassed to say I've never been to one. I've That's not right. been to a girlfriend's weekend. So Sue, you want to talk? You want to tell about? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've watched the videos and heard the stories. I've heard so many stories about it. I'm not witnessed it, you know, myself. Now I've been to three, three in person, and then and then last year's virtual one. And yeah, it, they are kind of hard to describe aren't they Jonathan <laughs> oh, they are nice. they are so much fun and they are I mean the first time I went I went by myself I didn't know anybody there except a couple of people I met online I didn't know Kathy um and I remember standing at the back of the room uh, during a panel I was stretching my legs and in walks Allison Richmond Gordon um, Randy Susan Myers and MJ Rose and they're standing next to me and I have read their books and I've admired them for so long and I'm just standing there going oh and all of a sudden and and I talked to some of them online and Allison looked over at me and she said Susan Peterson and I was like oh my god yeah and but it's that kind of a thing it's like here are these people I I mean idolized for so for long and there they were and you know you have dinner together and they serve you in crazy costumes and it's just a lot of, I don't know, there's a, there's a real, and I, I didn't know anybody when I got there, but I knew a ton of people when I left. It was amazing how, how quickly you just bond with, with these other readers and the authors and because you're all together for three days, you're just all in the same place eating together and talking and it's, it, there's nothing like that. I've, I've been to other book festivals and other book events. There's nothing like Nothing like Girlfriend Weekend. I was on a high, especially my first weekend for a really long time. And then and then I got to have an infamous um, panel for their 20th anniversary when it was the first panel I'd ever done. I'd never interviewed authors anywhere before. And I was even actually the, like the first panel for the whole weekend. And so I was nervous and Kathy had told me she was gonna do something because the 20th anniversary, we were celebrating the fact that she had started as a bookstore beauty shop owner. And so there was a beauty shop chair on the stage and that's where I sat. And during my panel with these four authors that I had, Kathy did my hair. And my hair was about this high, hair sprayed. It took me days to get the hair sprayed out of my hair. But, and I had no idea what was going on, but it was great because I didn't even know what was going on. So I'm just talking to these authors and it really calmed me down. I don't know if Kathy did that on purpose or if she just thought it'd be fun, but um, yeah, that, that was crazy. But we, yeah, that's just what we do. <laughs> we have a lot of Pulpwood Queens uh, authors and members who are uh, on the Facebook side right now. I can see from who's, <laughs> who's commenting. So okay. Pulpwood Queens have definitely shown up for, for this uh, conversation. <laughs> As they, <laughs> as they do reliably for you know for anything that's put out there in the world pulpwood queens 
that you have it there. It's you know a guarantee of audience every single time, which yeah. authors I think certainly appreciate. Yeah. Well, um, my uh, first book event that I did in Tennessee, because um, I did them here, I did it one at Fairhope, but when I went home to Tennessee, and I had it at a bar, a Brown's Diner, a little hole in the wall bar, because that's where it's a long story, but it was, I mean, that's where I wanted to do it. And it, we, you know, jam packed, standing room only. I looked up and there was a leopard print jacket. There was River Jordan, Popwood Queen, ah. and then Brent McLean came. And I was just like, it is such a cool community. I, there's nothing like it. No, I'm so proud to be a part of it. Remarkable. How many, mem how many members does, the, does it have? I don't even know. Yeah, like it's 800 it's chapters. So do the math from there, assuming a chapter is eight to 10 people on average. It's really? pretty That's remarkable. Nice size. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of size. Yes. Mm -hmm. And those are chapters who still meet primarily in person, even if they may be Zooming with an author, as we're doing right now. That's the way our, our local club does it. So these are folks who are still engaging with each other's lives above and beyond the book club, too, which makes it all the more remarkable. Right. Uh, Mandy, before I have to switch over uh, and have the wonderful occasion of continuing our conversation with Sue, what I would love for you to tell us a little bit about uh, Reading Nation magazine, which is relatively new to the Pulpwood Queens uh, equation, but exciting things are happening with that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I made, I just started out in April to surprise Kathy, you know, because, you know, we're just bored, you know, not being able to get out and do things. So I made a, um, a small, like a flip book. And I did her on the cover, Reading Nation Magazine, Sue Peterson, the pictures of her big hair. She actually writes about, in there, yes. about that in there. In <laughs> September, it's out now. Um, we have over 18,000 views. I just checked, it was like 18,300. I just, wow. my, the website hit a thousand um, visits on Radio Nation, and it's a way, what makes it so cool is that it only features Pulpwood Queen and Timberda authors. Well, I have learned so much from our authors by pulling their bios and creating the pages, and it's like, I'll call Kathy and say, do you, did you know we, <laughs> this author, you know, all, she's got this cool resume, and just, she like saved this old theater, and this other one, like, she saved this old horse, like, I'm like, do you, these, Authors are so cool. Um, so it's just the Pulpo Queen and Timber Guy authors and the bloggers and different book groups that are involved, but it's available for readers everywhere. So it's really getting a big, you know, it's um, really taken off. I'm excited about it. And it, you know, it's, and it's low cost advertising for our authors too, because that's another thing. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's expensive, but, um, Reading Nation, that's part of it, being a member, you know, because you get, it's a good deal. <laughs> it is. Uh, the bang for the buck is just remarkable for that. And it's a good looking magazine too. You've done such a nice job with it, Mandy. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I ran into a coworker at the, where I worked at the bookstore and he, he said something about it. And I said, oh, did I tell you about the magazine? And he said, what? And I said, did I, are you talking about Reading Nation? He said, yeah. And I said, did I tell you about it? He said, you're read, you did that? He just found it. And he was telling me, have you seen this magazine? And I was like, I made this magazine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a good story. Uh, we're having a little internet uh, issue overseas, so uh, I'm going to actually switch to Susie McMahon in case we, in case she drops out. We don't, which we uh -oh. definitely are not rooting for. We don't want to catch on fire. <laughs> yes, we don't want that outcome either. No, no, no fire. Yes. Uh, so Susie, you had the brilliant idea to create a book club, maybe not quite knowing what was happened from it, uh, but remarkable things happened very quickly and it continues to grow. And it's just been phenomenal to see so many of our friends from the Conroy Center be highlighted and elevated by virtue of the book club. And, and we've arrived at this wonderful partnership, which I'm very grateful for, but I'd love it if you'd tell the origin story of that, how and why you decided you were gonna enter this world. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, basically, um, about a, well, 
April of 2020, um, I was at my house in Beaufort and I was staying March into April for obvious reasons, not wanting to travel back to my home state, my primary home of Colorado, which is going to switch in about a year or a couple more months. The primary home is Beaufort. Um, but basically, I was sitting around not having much to do and was on Facebook and happened to run across um, an author chat by our um, favorite writer friend, Rebecca Dwight Bruff. And um, she was interacting with another group and I was asking questions. One thing led to another. The next day, the organizer of that group said, um, you've won a free author talk with Rebecca um, and I'm gonna connect the two of you. And so we were all locked down, nowhere to go. And I just was like, well, why don't we try to do this on Facebook? And I will set up a group, try to get people in it, and then I will have a meeting a month later because we will feature her book. Um, so we did that and it grew um, rather quickly. And I have members from all over the country, um, primarily South Carolina, Colorado, lots from Texas. And um, we just did a one on one stream conversation. And prior to the meeting I had with her, she said, what are you going to do to continue this? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> and she said, well, why don't I refer you to another author? And I was like, that is fantastic. Oh, yeah. So she referred me to the second author and so on and so on and so on. So we've now been doing this uh, one featured author a month. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, we may have lost. We have a meeting. There we, we have that currently featured author inter um, introduce a surprise author. And that's going to be someone for the future. And that's how it's grown. It's oh, such fun. a cool model. A great idea. Yeah, it's really phenomenal the way it, it builds these connective threads between the communities of readers and writers by virtue of the, of the recommend model, recommend and read model. Uh, but we've got some other things going on too, Susie. It's grown to include another facet. And here we should probably add as context that you are a travel professional. And that has led to uh, some interesting new ideas. So would you, would you share those with us? Absolutely. So um, one of the authors said to me one day, you should have a... Oh, Susie, we've... Uh, led to another. Um, my business space in Beaufort is called Lux Low Country Travel. And I do what are called um, low country getaways where I coordinate bringing people from different states we meet in the low country, we sightsee, we just enjoy the low country area. And I was able to take the itinerary that I normally do for travel and immerse it into um, doing author meet and greets. And one thing led to another. And then I said, why don't we do some fundraising um, for the Pat Conroy Literary Center? So next March, we're doing a low, a low, country, le lo excuse me, low country literary and leisure getaway. Um, I have a group of women coming from all over the country and we're going to have um, a meet and greet event at the Buford Inn with all the authors that we featured. There's 12 of them and a lot of different activities. Um, we're doing a free author panel that has been helped put together by um, Donna Armour and it's friends of Pat Conroy and that's going to be taking place during these, this time. And then we'll be also doing a Low Country Boil event where Jonathan is going to present a lot of more information about the about Pat Conroy. But the inspiration to that is we're gonna have the book club read The Water is Wide. Um, Jonathan's going to represent um, the for, uh, Pat to Defusky Island tour with Sally Ann Robinson. So we've got a lot of things that are interconnected, a lot of balls in the air, but it's gonna be a really fun event. And I invite all of you to come to those special events as well. It is a very so cool, cool. event. <laughs> some are open to the public, some highlight our local authors, some are specific uh, for the group that Susie is bringing in, but it's this great big welcoming umbrella of events. And it's just been phenomenal to see the way that our local author community said, yes, please, let's do this. 
and, and brought the pieces together. Uh, Susie, would you say the dates again? I think you got cut off during that part. Oh, sorry about that. Um, March 9th through the 13th of 2022 in Beaufort. Yes. And um, we can maybe share a link or something about the details on that um, in, your, in the show notes or something. Yeah, we can definitely do that. And it overlaps with March 12th, which is my birthday. I'm just throwing that out there for the putting that out there to the world in case anybody wants to act on that. Donna Armour is a pulpwood queen author. She's a pulpwood queen. She is. Yeah. 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 So is Becky Bruff, uh, who's watching us on the Facebook side right now. We mentioned a couple of times here already. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Oh. So Sue, let's circle back around to you then and uh, tell us a little bit about how Sue's Reading Neighborhood came to exist. It, it sort of snowballed. I, I retired from, I, I worked in education for 29 years. I was a teacher's aide for 29 years. And when I retired in 2014, I got, I, I'd always been a reader. Mandy knows that from the article that I wrote for the magazine, I, I'd always read. And of course I, I had, lots more time to read and I also found myself with lots more time to be on Facebook because I wasn't working and I met Diane Chamberlain I think was the very first author I ever followed on Facebook and I remember at one point she said if you like my books you should read and the, the author she mentioned was Barbara Davis who is also now a pulpit queen author she's been on my panel the last two years and um and I said oh so so I read Barbara's books and then friended her on Facebook. And then that grew into just all kinds of people. The connections just, it just snowballed. I mean, from, from Diane Chamberlain, all of a sudden I knew all these people. And I didn't even know that there were these reading groups on Facebook. I just, I had no idea. And I joined a couple and won a couple of books through different events that were going on, which I had never ever done before. And then I started hearing about reviews and how reviews are such a huge part of an author. And as a, I read all my life, but I'd never thought about writing reviews and what that would even look like. And I look back at my first reviews and they are just so bad, but um, hopefully they're better now. Um, anyway, just sort of snowballed from there. And then, then I thought, well, I'm gonna start promoting these people. I, I want a book from Laura Spinella, who is now, who is this great author whose work I love. And, and after I won that book, then I started thinking, well, I should maybe mention her on Facebook. I had no idea what I was doing. I thought, oh, I'm just, and, and I think by that, then more authors got to know me because, you know, as I said, this whole thing just snowballed. And I realized I was spending so much time on Facebook talking about books and probably annoying some of my friends who maybe don't read as much as I do. And it was actually after my first pulpit, after my first girlfriend weekend. And I thought, man, I should just try it. So I, I think it was just a, like a week after I got home, I'd set up this little group. And I actually originally had called it Sue's Booking Agency because I envisioned myself being like this travel agent for, but for books. But it got a, the, the, that name was a little misleading. And, and Betty Lee Crosby, who's also a public queen author now, um, <laughs> she had said one time that she felt like it was like a neighborhood, that it was just this nice little neighborhood. So that's where that where that came from. And I just like to get on there and share my reviews and talk about the books that I love and, and bring in new authors. I like, I like to bring in debut authors and I, I get really excited when I read a debut author and I had just finished reading Sugarbirds, which is amazing. And that was written by a debut. And I just love finding those little gems and then putting those authors out there and their books out there. And I just, you know, that just, it's just so much fun. And, and, I don't think there's anything better than, and I've had this happen when, when readers have, I've had, re, actually, I've had readers say to me that they'd never read a book that I recommended that they didn't like. I said, well, that, that, that's a good thing. <laughs> so I, I, I just like bringing that and I, and I get thanked by readers for bringing these authors to their attention who they would not know who they were, you know? So that's, that's what I do. It's a remarkable service that you provide, and it, it speaks very highly to you that you have readers who have enjoyed every single book that you've recommended, because it is such a subjective act, but that means the folks who are drawn to the neighborhood have very similar sensibilities to you, I think and that's so. a nice way to build a community as well. And, it, and, it, and it's funny, because I'm in other groups, and there's, 
and I've never had issues with my group. My, my group stays very positive. It stays very welcoming and very positive. And I love that about it. I love that it's, that is kind of like a little neighborhood with a whole bunch of neighbors, but um, you know, and I'm, not, and I'm sure that people don't tell me if they read a book that they don't like, <laughs> but at least I know that they are liking the books that I, that I, that I recommend. So mm -hmm. how do you, that's my goal. How do you find the books or do authors find you or is it a combination of both of those things? A little bit of both. Um, I look at, at what other people are reading. I'll get on Instagram and some uh, and an author who I follow will say, hey, maybe you should, you know, read this book. And I was like, oh, it sounds interesting. And so I get a lot of recommendations still on social media from, from different authors and from readers. And sometimes it's just luck. I, you know, I just... And, and authors do reach out to me. I will get authors that will contact me and say, hey, I, you know, if you like this book, then maybe you'd like my book. That's how I met Deborah Mantella. Um, yep. when, when, she, when I first read her book, I think it was because I think I had read another author who's Donna Everhart, who I love, and, and I love her books. And she was like, oh, you like Donna's books? Maybe you'd like mine. Can I send it to you? And, 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 and I did. And so that, that's always fun when those, those connections happen too. Mm -hmm. Mandy's face lit up when you said Donna Everhart. Um, I love her. <laughs> love, love her writing. <laughs> Me too. Her new book is wonderful. Her, it's so good. But, I haven't um, read that one yet, but it's it almost... comes out in February, I think. Oh well. So I've got we'll time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to circle back around to everybody, but I want to talk to Tina, who's got a really interesting story and community that she's created as well. Uh, Tina, let's talk first about how your writing life began, how you how you entered the world of being a novelist, because I'd love to hear more about that. Um, as you mentioned earlier, my dad was an author, so I grew up in a writer's house. So I've always loved to read. I've always loved to write. When we were growing up, we never had a TV in the house. We were not. A, we never had a TV in the house. We had to read books. That was our entertainment or board games. And my dad, who's James P. Hogan, he was a science fiction author. Sadly, he passed away in 2000. But he had 38 books printed, but he had a lot more to say. Uh, but he's always been my inspiration, always. And um, I knew back in the back of my mind that one day I wanted to write a book. But of course, I didn't have that idea right away. But I knew that I wanted to write a book. And then things happened in my life. And it's like I had a message for other women. And I knew I wanted to write this book, put this message out there. Um, the bottom line is the trilogy, which is called the Tammy Mello trilogy, the debut novel, Reckless Beginnings was uh, uh, published in 2018. And it was supposed to be just one book. I had this message. You know how this goes, right? <laughs> it's never just the one book. But um, you know, my dad once said, you know, if you can't find the book you're looking for, write it. You know, and that's what I did. I couldn't find the book. So I ended up writing the book. And the book is pretty much basically, I found myself being dictated by a heroin addict. And I had lost my, um, my, my sense of direction, my self-esteem, everything. But I wanted other women to connect with what I was going through. So that's why I decided to write the book to let other women, doesn't have to be a woman, it could be any family member that's going through um, a relationship where the other person is an addict. So that's what started the series, the, the trilogy. And then from there, um, I became a commercial fisherwoman. So here comes another book. <laughs> and it's basically my travels um, of getting into an industry that is dominated by men. And I, again, each book is a message. And this is pretty much, if you can put your mind to something, you can pretty much do it. And that's where the trilogy started. And I was happy to say that that book actually won a gold medal last year, Reader's Favorite for Best Fiction Adventure. So that, that was, you know, a really an honor. And then the third book, The Reunions, uh, came out this year, and that again won the gold medal. So I was quite chuffed with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some wonderful validation uh, for your writing, Tina. Uh, you know, I, I look at Tina's uh, biography on her website, read through it, and I think it's describing five or six different women who've lived full and complete lives. And it's just, <laughs> just you. It's 
pretty remarkable, your story, Tina. And then, uh, I mean, what, what you said about the reason for writing your book, about wanting people to know that they're not alone, that's very much the motivator for Pat Pomeroy's writing as well. It's a, a, a motivation for many writers, I think, to, to get from the personal to the universal, to let people know that, they're, that there are shared experiences and there's optimism and hope that can be found in that. But you had that uh, by virtue of the online community that you've started as well. So I'd love for you to talk about how that came into existence and sort of- Yeah, the Read More Books is my, I call it my second home. Yeah. I really do, because <laughs> I just love the members in this group and it, and it is a home to me. I mean, they're all family to me. Read More Books, there's a little story behind the name of the group too, because like I said, my dad, was an author, we never had the TV. And if I had a question, his thing with me would be, read more books, just go read more books and you'll have the answer. So that's why I gave the name, it's in kind of memory of my dad, because that was what he always said to me, just read more books. But when I started the group in 2019, my, my premises was to have a platform for me and my writing, give readers um, an, um, an insight to what I'm working on, what's coming out, but it's evolved from that because the book community is just amazing. And what I love about it is the support that you get, not just from the readers, but the other authors. And we're not in competition with everyone. We are a family. We help each other as much as we can. We support each other. We share each other's books. And that just grabbed me. So even though it started as a platform for me as an author, it evolved to where now um, it also represents a part of me. And what you'll find is, yes, it's a place where you can um, find out about other books, other authors, but there's little parts of me in there too. And one of the things I love is puzzles. I love any kind of puzzles, jigsaw puzzles, word puzzles, brain teasers. So this group has puzzles every single day. And the readers just love them. They, they rave about them and they're scheduled. If you want to do a jigsaw puzzle, it'll be there at noon. If you want to do a number puzzle, it's there at 10. And if it's not, if Facebook, for whatever reason, doesn't schedule my post, uh, my messenger goes off, Tina, the puzzle's not here. You know? <laughs> so I really enjoy that part about it. And then also to support other authors, I do a Cuppa and Anatta. Mandy was on it. You were on it. <laughs> oh, it was so much fun. We had so much fun. I, I love doing these and I do them twice a month on a Monday. And I call it a cup and a natter because I'm originally from England. I came over here in 1979. And a cuppa is a cup of tea and a natter is a chat. So it's a cup and a natter. And mm -hmm. I have a guest author. Mandy was a brilliant mm -hmm. guest. We had so much fun. I got to learn about her and her books and the readers did too. But it's a way of you know, sharing with my readers in my group, other authors and their books. So I love giving author support that way. And then also I do, um, I allow authors to come in on Tuesdays and do takeovers. So that's another way. So I really love showing my readers other books, other authors, and um, I love it. It's, it's a fantastic group. I really do. And if I'm not in there all day, I miss it. <laughs> Uh, I've gotten to do one of the author takeovers uh, on behalf of the Conroy Center and Our Prince of Scribes, the anthology I'm involved in, and I had the best time. Uh, the comments, the responses, both online, in Facebook, and then after that, coming directly to me. Uh, and I think not... you're going to be my guest in December for my company. Yeah. Yes, I am. I'm looking forward I'm to that too. Accompanied by one of my young sidekicks, so we can have a, a, a conversation very much like Sue and I got to have with Holland too. But yeah. we're really looking forward to that, Tina. That's exciting. Yeah, I've time. watched a few of them, including the one you did with Mandy, and they're just extraordinary. You're so generous in sharing the spotlight, and it just seems like such an authentic conversation because it is. And you really, yeah, and an audience member, as a viewer, you feel included in that. You don't right. feel like you're watching something, the barrier sort of slips away, and you feel like you're part of it. Yeah, and I tell, you know, I tell the authors before we go live, you know, I'm not, it's not a script. I don't have a ton of questions in front of me. We're just going to take it like you're in my home, having a cuppa and a chat. And we just take it from that. That's exactly what it feels like. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's so much fun. It is. It really is. So uh, since we've mentioned the two ways that authors can participate and read more books, uh, Tina, can you tell us a little bit more about 
how we can direct authors who, who may want to submit something or participate in that way or be considered, and also how readers can join as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, they can, first of all, they can go to the, the, um, the group, read more books, yep. and request to join. Once they're in there, if they go to the announcement part of the group, there is a sign up sheet for the Tuesday um, takeovers. And I think it's all the way through to the end of the year. And you can just simply put in your name there. And um, there's a choice of morning or afternoon. You get three hours in the day, a morning or an afternoon. And then Jennifer, one of the moderators, she'll reach out to you and give you the rundown of what to do. Um, and as far as the chats, the, the Cuppa and Anata chats, they can message me directly at Tina Hogan Grant uh, through Facebook. I am booked through April. So it would be after April, which is great. I love it. Um, but of course, if cancellations come up, things do happen in life. You will be on that list too. If a cancellation come up, I would reach out to you and say, hey, so-and-so couldn't make it. Would you like to fill the spot? So even though I'm booked through April, you know, go ahead and reach out to me because you will be on the backup list if something comes up before something opens up after April. Yeah, it speaks very highly of how successful this is that you are already scheduled out through April, that there's that much demand for and it. I should mention the one thing I, I do re request is a giveaway. When we do the chat, you know, and coming onto the, onto the show, I do request that you give a, a small giveaway and it'll only be for the, the people that are watching us live. That's where the drawing will be. And it is announced a couple of hours later after the chat. Mm -hmm. Which is a great feature too. I mean, that, that draws readers in. It's a fun thing mm -hmm. for writers to do. You mentioned Jennifer, and that's actually who connected me to you initially okay. because Jennifer's involved in another book group, Tattered Page, uh, that I did an author takeover to and had a great time. She's fantastic. She's also my personal assistant. She, she, she works a lot behind the scenes for me and I appreciate everything she does. She is, she is wonderful. She really is. So, and it's nice to see that those connective threads, once again, that, you know, doing something in one group can very often lead to your introduction to another group out there. Mm -hmm. In my experience, many times over, um, and, and probably will continue to be as well. Uh, so in the spirit of that, since we have some time, I'd love to ask you all about are there other book groups like this that you follow, folks who are maybe not represented in our conversation here today that we can do a shout out for? Um, I like, oh, oh, go ahead, Sue. go ahead. <laughs> bookish, bookish Road Trip is mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Yep. Um, that's run by a group of authors and it's, it, it's really a fun group. They have different activities every day um, too and really interesting conversations. Sometimes they're about books, sometimes it's about traveling, sometimes it's about anything. It, it, it's just a real fun interactive um, group. I also like um, a friend of mine runs a page called um, The Romance of Reading, which is mostly, it's mostly romance books, a lot of, but they also, she also does a lot of historical fiction. Um, it's a, it's a really great group also. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a ton. <laughs> yeah, Wild Sage, Denise Burt's Wild That's Sage. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's a great one. Um, and oh then, my gosh. Another one I like is Reading is My Passion. Well, that's Betty's, that's group. Betty's group. I love her group too. Um, those popped in my head right away, especially Wild Sage. I love Denise. She is, she does a lot bringing readers and writers together. She really does. I appreciate her a lot too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Pros and Pandemic. Ooh, yes, yes. Yes. I that was another really good one. Oh my gosh. Um, Another one is um, Bookworms Anonymous. Yes. Oh, I don't know that one. Okay. Yes. It's, it's a big group. It it's is a, a very big group. group. Yeah. yeah. They've been around a few years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it's like I'm drawing a blank. I can see like a flash of their Facebook <laughs> banner, but I can't. <laughs> Why am I there, are, on this? there are a lot out there uh, sure it's it's worth spending a little time going down the rabbit hole doing a little research and, and seeing uh, because there's a different character there's a different personality to almost every one of them and some focus on reviews and some focus on author interviews and some have giveaways and some don't and right. some have a paywall but you're getting something of value for, for that uh, subscription as well I mean it, the variety of models is really just astounding as well. And, and I think that all these groups had did such a good service for authors, especially over this last year and a half. Yes. I, when when everything shut down last mm -hmm. spring, and I knew that um, 
that especially for debut authors that were that had already had their launches planned they had mm -hmm. book events planned for april of last year or march of last year and a lot a lot of them were were in my group or new people in my group and so i put out a thing and i said anybody who wants to celebrate their launch in 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 our group said then just let me know and I, and i did i did quite a few during that time to get in their audience mm -hmm. and at least to get them because i especially for debut authors i just felt mm -hmm. really bad <laughs> that they were mm -hmm. missing out on so much of the experience that most you know yeah. that debut authors just long for and they they didn't get to get it and that's kind of how um the cup and another started because of the pandemic i was mm -hmm. supposed to do a signing at our local library mm -hmm. and of course it you know it was closed down mm -hmm. i couldn't go live so i thought okay well i need to reach you know more people than just what's in my my group at the time the group was maybe 500 people something like that so okay i'm going to try and go live and i had another author with me um for support because it was the first time i was going to go live like yeah. you know? <laughs> But we had so much fun and the response was just wonderful. And they were still talking about it the next day. So I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll try this again in a couple of weeks. I wonder who would like to join me. And from there evolved the local chats every month. So that's how that evolved just because I couldn't get out and promote. Yeah. I think yeah, that's it was, one of Susie's experience as well. Mm -hmm. that, uh, I, yeah, I was going to say that's what was so um, interesting to me was just to see how being being a travel agent and just being a reader and that next thing i know i'm meeting all these wonderful authors and interviewing them and same thing there was some bestsellers or some debut novelists and just feeling a change to an industry because of what we were going through and being a part of it was really yeah. rewarding from my standpoint um, and just seeing how I was helping out, um, helping authors reach uh, maybe a different geographical area um, that they you know, didn't reside in that may not be a bestseller yet, but are trying to reach different areas of the country. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I love that sense of inclusivity about all of your groups because it's very much in keeping with the Conroy Center and with Pat's circle of friends as well, which included New York Times bestsellers and Pulitzer Prize winners, and also folks who were debut writers who maybe weren't known outside of their state or community. But uh, but Pat welcomed them, and we, the Conroy Center, welcomed them, and you, all of you seem to do that as well. That's very much been my experience with the pulp mm -hmm. queens in particular to go. And, and you know, be starstruck by authors. I never thought I would be standing in, in Jackson, <laughs> Texas, with. Uh, but next to me is a debut novelist who's equally starstruck because she also never thought she was going to have that experience. Well, and that's what's so fun with the magazine because some of the authors are brand new, and um, they're like, I don't even have an audience yet. Like, I don't have one. Well, in the magazine, I, I think about that when I'm making the pages, and I'll put a new person that's just starting next to one somebody that has a huge following leslie Lair, you know and i'll put those pages you know together so if a reader's going that love you know like a leslie Lair fans looking for her they'll see you know right beside her is this other book that's fantastic um so hopefully they'll see those too it's like because there's power you know in numbers it's like we're all about sharing like every it was all about sharing and mm -hmm. it's yeah it's so fun it's That's a great a, partnership, I think, that we all have with authors and readers. And I think drawing everybody together and bringing everybody together is just really important. And one thing that's nice about virtual events, whether it's in a Facebook group or something else, is that you can pull in people from all over, you know, at, you know, at, at the same time, instead of only reaching 20 people at a, at a bookstore or something. So that's, that's one advantage. I, I still miss yeah. live book events a lot. <laughs> They'll be back, hopefully soon. They will be back. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, and that's kind of uh, what we're seeing with our Low Country Book Club convention this year as well, which is sort of hybrid. There is an in-person audience with some events. Uh, last night we had uh, a full house uh, by our local mm -hmm. standards at our local bookstore, uh, Neverbore, one of our three local bookstores. Buford has the wonderful advantage of having three independent bookstores, uh, which is nice. But we had Jason Mott, who's a New York Times bestseller, newly uh, finalist for the National Book Award for a book called uh, Hell of a Book. And it's been out for three months. And he told us last night that this event in Buford was the first in-person event he's done for, for wow. that book. 
it's a Today Show selection. This is a guy who's in huge demand wow. who chose to come wow. to Buford. But we also wow. live streamed that. So we had an audience, you know, above and beyond our in-person audience. And that video continues to circulate today, too. So it's really wonderful to make use of all of the different tools that we, we now have discovered we have available. Uh, thanks to the pandemic, we, we probably wouldn't have had these thoughts. We probably wouldn't be having this conversation we're having right now uh, were it not for that situation sort of leading to the discovery that there's a there's a, a much larger audience we can reach in this way. Yeah, just last week, I, a book club in England read one of my books and I actually appeared for them on Zoom after they read the book. I couldn't do that, you know, mm -hmm. before the pandemic. I never thought of doing something like that. Now I'm able to read book clubs in England. They read the book and uh, we chat for an hour about the book. So nice. It's, it's great. Yeah, that's wonderful. Wonderful. So we've got a few minutes left. Uh, I will say uh, for those of you who are with us on Facebook or those of you who will eventually be with us on YouTube when I move the video over there, I have put links to all of these groups into the description as well. So you can go and find out more about how to join, how to participate either as a reader or as a writer. With our last few minutes, gang, since uh, we're in the, the spirit of the book community, I wonder if uh, you'd each be willing to recommend a book or books that you've read recently that you think more people need to know about. So, uh, so give us a quick one or two recommendations. Who, who wants to jump in on that? Well, I already mentioned Sugar Birds, um, yeah, yes. which is, it's just a. It's been compared to where the crawdad sings. It's that kind of. It's a. It's a young girl who finds herself on her own in the wilderness, and how she survives. And it was. It's beautifully written. It takes place in the Northwest in Washington, and it was fabulous. My daughter read it right after I read it, and she agreed. So, um, it. I. I real. I keep rec recommending that book to everybody. Thank you, Sue. That's so, nice. Oh, I feel bad because I've got like all these stacks of books that I've been reading for the list and there's so many that I don't want to just say four or five because there's so many. Oh. I know I it's so that. it's so hard because you you think of everyone and you want to oh. say everyone so I just want to say what I'm currently reading and what I just read if that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we just featured um, Dana Rittenauer, local Bufortonian, um, Buford area author, um, Behind the Mask. She's a former FBI agent and um, very interesting book. And it's several, several more to read. So I'm looking forward to that. And then um, I'm reading an author who came to me from Colorado, a very young girl. Her name is Christine Reed. And we're reading um, Out There in Wonderland. And it's about it's almost got a sense of the the book wild uh, that was so popular um, about her hiking and getting over mm -hmm. some emotional trauma um, I just now cracked open that one so Christine Reed thank you Susie uh, and here I should point out that Dana will be part of our program tomorrow morning she's a member of our local uh, Pulp Wood Queens and author of the Lexi Montgomery undercover FBI series but she'll be part of the group that's presenting tomorrow morning on Pat Conroy's a local mm -hmm. heart. I'm very excited to see Dana in that capacity as well. She's also one of our Conroy Center volunteers, as is Becky Bruff, who we've mentioned a couple times, and Donna Armour, too. We have a lot of really wonderful writers here in Beaufort who have give uh, of their many times, uh, many time, uh, excuse me, give of their time and their many talents to our Conroy Center. We're very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Tina, you want to add a recommendation or two? Something you maybe you have read recently? I've got a couple that, well, it's okay. My problem is I don't read as much as I'd like to. It's either write or read, and writing always wins. <laughs> um, but a book I recently finished uh, is a debut novel, but it came out in 2018, and I'm waiting for a next book. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's still working, but anyways, it's um, Shadows and Light by Carol Hawkins. Okay. Um, I really love this book. I love her writing. I love the whole storyline. Um, I actually put a review up on my website. And um, another genre that I love to read is historical fiction, especially in World War II. And one, that whenever one, someone asks me, well, I'm not gonna say favorite book, but one that sticks with you. And ones that stick with me is The Tattooist of Auschwitz. 
Mm-hmm. I absolutely mm-hmm. love that book. And I do have the other book. I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it yet to read it. But that is one book that has stayed with me. And I actually had the privilege of meeting the author, um, which was just fantastic too. But yeah, those two books I recommend. Yeah, I can't stand it. Robert Gwaltney's The Cicada Tree is fantastic. <laughs> well, like it is like, it is so good. Southern Gothic has got a little, and he's new, great voice. And then River Jordan has a new collection of short stories that'll be coming out soon. And I'm actually formatting that for her. So I've got to read all the stories. And I mean, she's a great writer, everything she writes, but she hasn't written fiction in a while. So I cannot wait for these stories to get out because they're so good. As Sugar Baby and other stories. So, so but so many more. <laughs> does uh, does River's book have a pub date yet, Mandy? Well, um, she was shooting for the end of September. Mm-hmm. Um, but then she had a whole lot of things going on. So I don't know if we're going to make the, because I mean, it's already, you know, it's getting close, but it's, it's soon. I mean, she's all, she's, we're just at the final stages. The cover's done. It's yeah. beautiful. She's gotten fantastic endorsements. Um, it's just getting her to put her butt in the seat and <laughs> get to those last looks, you know, she's, <laughs> she's busy all the time. So but I, I would say, Maybe October, mid October. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm pushing her. <laughs> thank you all for your recommendations. And I will say uh, thanks as well to Susie, who, who may be ejecting, uh, depending on what her internet <laughs> and battery power situation <laughs> may be there. So I definitely want to say thank you to Susie in case we lose her before thank that. Thank you. Nice to meet everyone. You too, you. Susie. Yes. Um, let me throw in one quick recommendation, and then I want to uh, share a video from another member of our panel who was not able to be here in person, but I definitely want to include her as well, our friend Susie Leopold, who does the Susie Approved Book Tours, uh, who we had a great conversation with earlier this week. Uh, but I just finished reading for the second time uh, Wiley Cash's new book, When Ghosts Come Home, which came out on Tuesday which is you know, a crime novel, but then also very much not that, and a novel about racism, and also very much more than that. I mean, it's- uh, Yeah, I need to read that. A lot of people are having difficulty <laughs> describing it because it is such, such a phenomenal triumph of, of literature. There's so many ways in and so many ways out, as, as Wiley has done many times before. So that's just an exquisite book, newly out into the world. So y'all, uh, I'm gonna, as I said, uh, do a quick video share of, a, of an interview that I did with Susie Leopold, who was originally supposed to be part of the program and ended up traveling. We were also supposed to have another member and that's our dear friend, Annie McDonald from The Right Review. And Annie was with us earlier uh, during the book club convention Tuesday night interviewing uh, me and Holland. And that video is on our Facebook feed. So if you're watching this there, you can scroll down and find that. And if you're on YouTube, you can find it there as well. And and we've talked about Annie and The Right Review a couple of other times at the Conroy Center because she's been very kind to come and read, uh, lead, excuse me, free workshops for both readers and writers about uh, the world of book reviews and book blogs and all of those things uh, as well. So uh, thank you to Annie for participating earlier in the week. Sorry she couldn't be with us tonight. And thank all of you, thank all four of you, uh, Mandy, Tina, Sue, and Susie for your time and your conversation and for what you do for readers and writers because it, it means so much to all of us. I'm glad we got to talk about it tonight and hopefully send some more people your way as well. Thank you. This is a lot you. of fun, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Oh, you're very welcome. You know. So uh, you are welcome to stay on if you too want to watch the video, but I'm going to do our screen share right now, and then we will close up shop right after that. Just a second to load, but I think we've got it. Joined by Susie Leopold, uh, and so we can talk about all things Susie approved. I'm sorry you couldn't be with us for the live session with our other friend, and Susie. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you taking the time to pre-record this. Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry we don't get to see each other in person this year either. We both have uh, some nice affiliations with the good folks around the Willie Morris Award uh, for Southern 
Southern uh, fiction and for Southern poetry, for that matter. So we've got to meet in person uh, before yes. that capacity. But let's talk about how you uh, entered this wonderful world of books and publishing and, and uh, all things storytelling. So what's your story? So my love for reading was not as a child. It pretty much came about when I was working. You know, I was getting my CPA and I was working in the city and I always felt like I can't read. You know, I didn't have the time to read. So when I got my CPA and I switched careers, I, I read a little bit more. I was in private accounting and then the kids came along and I got to read a bit more. Um, and then as they entered preschool, you know, I would, I found a community of people I would work out with in the morning. And with that said, they'd say, what are you reading? I would forget. I would get, and then I would remember, I don't know if this happens to you. If you forget the name of the book, you forget the name of the author. All the time. I would forget. I would forget and in the middle of the class I would remember and I'd say the name of the book and the person we would start chatting would get in trouble I was like okay I'm gonna get kicked out of my bar method class so that's when I started my blog and the blog was on WordPress and it's funny how I became through WordPress I became good friends with Linda Zagon who is Linda's book obsession just from that WordPress account and I you know I, I used it as just friends from high school what should I read family I didn't know that there was this community on Facebook. I eventually put it on Facebook and I, I couldn't believe it. It just, it morphed into followers and I was like, oh, you know, I was very new to it. I wasn't really, you know, that was like maybe five years, you know, maybe seven years ago. I wasn't really, you know, what is Facebook? Up? You know, I'm seeing some friends from high school, college, you know, it's great. I'm connecting, but then there's just whole other world. You know, I stopped getting in trouble working out because people could then find the books I was reviewing. Um, I then started going to events. I, I live in Connecticut, so I would, as you, you know, I'd venture to events in New York City, and we did meet at one, and I would learn more about the publishing world, just sitting and listening and learn about interviewing, and I would meet authors, and I, you know, I'd venture by myself. I started to go to book festivals, book expo, meet bloggers. And things started to click. I was learning just by listening, learning how to interview. I'm, I'm also, I interview authors. So it just took a lot of time. Um, and people would say to me, you know, you should do book tours. You should do book tours. And so I had done some book tours for some great outlets. And I was like, every time I would do them, I'd be like, well, how come they don't ask me to do this? Or if I did it this way, and then the I did it this way, became a business model that my husband and I worked on. I am a CPA and an MBA. So we, for six months, sat down and said, all the what ifs, what ifs, the tax implications, the starting a business, because I am an LLC, I do pay my taxes. I, you know, I'm a good citizen. So it, it morphed into the tours. And, it, you know, it's funny, there's one author who would see me. She's like, where are those tours? I'm like, it's coming, it's coming. Every time I see her at an event. And, and what's really nice today is I have three tours going on um, for authors who, when I first started my blog, are now clients. And that's just like, you know. It's amazing when you make that, those connections and there's a longevity to them as well. So uh, right. can we stop one minute and, and back up and explain what yeah. you mean by, by tours? Because that uh, may not be immediately understood right. by all of our viewers. So, um, you know, whether you're a blogger and you're on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram, you are reviewing books. And as an author, sometimes you're looking for an extra lift for somebody to review your book. And you don't maybe want to reach out and write them that message. You know, I have a book, do you want to read it? It's always like that, you know, what if they say no, hurt feelings. So what my tours do, will the book virtual, they're virtual. So I will find readers for a book. Um, and there's certain options I have and there's certain parameters I have for the bloggers as well as the authors. And I find the bloggers that meet the criteria for the book that the author wants um, reviewed. And again, that author might be independently published or with a big house or a smaller publisher. And it's a great way for an author to get reviews, but also if they're new or maybe they want to find new readership, but also that Instagram community. So find that community so that when you have a second book or a third book, you already have those 12 or 15 people who are 
wanting to read the next book. And for the blogger, it's great exposure. You get some, you know, it, you get int introduction to an author, a publisher, a bookstagram community. And, you know, in a nutshell, I'm bringing that together. It's a really wonderful community you've put together and a really smart business model, too. And, and you know, I've benefited from it in two ways, uh, which I'll, I'll mention just briefly. One is uh, the book that I am embarrassingly proud co-editor of, Our Prince of Scribes, Writers Remember Pat Conroy, got so much visibility uh, because, because of the book tour um, and introduced me to bloggers that I follow to this day whose, whose recommendations I value I first encountered them that way. Uh, and the other gift you gave me is uh, reintroducing me to a friend from high school. I was, I was following the tour one day when a book called The Military Wife by a writer named Laura Trenum shows up. And I thought, that's odd. I went to high school with a girl named Laura Trenum that I've not seen and at that point, which was nearly 30 years. And I went to her website and it was her and, uh, and we connected because of that. So it, it's really just phenomenal what can happen uh, by virtue of, of what you do. Uh, so thank you for doing it, first thank and you. foremost. Um, so, uh, you know, two questions come to mind right now. One is, is how do readers get access to these tours? How do they get access to Suzy Approved? What do, what do they go to? Where do they find it? How do they connect? How do they follow it? So I have a website, Suzy Approved, which is on WordPress, but I'm basically, there's two websites on Facebook, well, not websites, it's pages, Suzy Approved Book Tours, and then Suzy Approved where I will post reviews this year. I haven't posted as much. I have a child. I'm trying to do college apps and the other one at school, hoping he doesn't get COVID. So the Susie approved reviews is I'll post maybe books are on sale, Goodreads giveaways, some reviews, some spotlights. And then the tour page is Susie approved book tours. Those are also on Instagram. And if somebody is interested or an author, um, it's, you know, there's Susie approved book tours at gmail.com is where typically a blogger will write me or an author will write me, but typically those pages also on Twitter, you can find a way to me. I don't ask, you know, I don't have a Google doc to say sign up even for an author. I like to have for each party, I like to chat with the author and understand their expectations. I also like to chat with the bookstagrammer on, via email about you know, how do they handle certain situations? I take a look at their Instagram page, you know, just to get an idea what, what genres they like to read, where are they located? Because sometimes I have, you know, folks overseas. So, you know, the chances of me sending a book out by a publisher is going to be difficult. So are you a digital reader or are you not? You know, it, you know, it's stuff, stuff like that. So I try to protect both parties. I'm very protective of the bloggers as well as, well as the author. It's important because you are kind of a matchmaker between, the, mm -hmm. between those two worlds, uh, between readers and writers, uh, both writers of the books and the writers of the reviews, and the blogs and, the, and all of that. So folks can follow your, you on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, Instagram, as they find reviewers and bloggers that they like through those sections, they can follow those folks as well, which I, which I found you know, just to be incredibly rewarding. Um, and let's let's uh, focus in a little bit more. And we talked about this a little bit just now, but how writers uh, and publishers, how authors and publishers can kind of reach out to you and, and see if they have a book that would be of interest for your model. How do they do that? They will send me an email. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes they'll be at like, apparently there was a panel that took place and I was talked about on a panel. Um, sometimes it's meeting me. I go to I go to a few book festivals. I went to Book Expo. I don't sell the tours because I truly want, you know, I don't solicit. I want the author who's interested. I don't want to strong arm somebody into doing a tour. So it's typically the I've been running off of word of mouth, and then, and I'm and I tend to repost on my Susie Approved tour page. I repost all my bloggers' posts so they can get a flavor of the tours, and you know they can also see on the Facebook page, the amount of people are, who are on each tours. So typically an author will write me and say, you know, just send me your information. So I'll, if they're interested, I'll send them. I have, you know, as I said, when I worked on a business model, I also have a sheet that details about me, my pricing, my history, like I'm a CPA and MBA, you know, how I operate. And then we take it from there. I don't follow up. I tend to not, if they're interested, they're interested. If, you know, they're not, I, you know, it's icky. 
And I just say, you know, make sure you talk to other tour operators. You know, I want make sure they make sure you check my references. There's a lot of great tour people. There's a lot, there's space for everybody. There's room for everybody in this space. Is, we can all support authors and bloggers, but I like them to just, you know, make sure that they're making the right decision for them. I might not be the right person for them, you know, and it comes down to, you know, I have different options depending on their wallet. And we talk about the different strategies. And so, you know, it, it works out. Sounds great. And it sounds like something, uh, you know, at least from what I've seen as a viewer, that authors want to participate in multiple times. If, if they have a good uh, relationship and a good reaction from doing the tour, they'll come back around for the next book or the book after that. Or, they, you know, sometimes, I, which is really, I love when an author is like finishes a tour and then like, can we do it again? So I, I have a few of them that, you know, want to keep the, I say, especially in this environment with COVID, with so many books, as they, I say, keep your foot on the gas pedal, you know. You know, keep the book out there. Keep yes. keep it moving. You know, keep keep. You know, it's just the eyes. Get the eyes on that book. You know, the That's rest a, will work its way out. Uh, yes, keeping momentum going has been absolute mm -hmm. key. Um, in, you know, in uh, in an average year, which admittedly this is not about how many tours, how many books would you be featuring through six year approved? Okay, so the COVID year twenty twenty, I did one hundred and forty five tours. Wow. Um, this year. I have booked 175 That's and great. I've done cover reveals for 2022. I have a list going into 2022. A non-COVID year, I had about 80. So it's, it's ramped up, you know, ask my kids how our dinners go. They're, you know, they're, <laughs> they're like, please mom, <laughs> you know, can you fold the laundry? You know, like, you know, it, it's just, they, they, they hope for me they're just, get out of the house, go to events so they can order in. They just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that too is momentum. That's the thing we just talked yeah. about. So obviously, uh, the Suzy Approved Tours have that right now. And I congratulate you on that. Thank you. Success. And I thank you for everything you're doing for readers and writers, for all of us. You know, I say to anyone starting, it's slow and steady. You know, it's, this was not something that I just did this year. I started five years ago. The tours were four years ago. You know, you take your time, you learn. I'm less nervous talking to an author. I'm less nervous talking to about a product, you know, about the product I have. You know, the beginning, you you know, it, it was good. I can grow with it. And I'm, you know, I've gone, go to events, listen to Zoom calls. I, no one can sit and tell you how the industry works. I've, I've picked it up just going to our event in the city, just understanding how it works. It, you know, the publishing industry is just interesting to learn. Subscribe to Publishers Weekly. Just read what you're seeing. You know, it, it, it'll come together. It just takes time to understand it. It's something we talk about at the Conroy Center a lot under the umbrella of being a good literary citizen. You know, if you're a writer and you want to sell a book, you, you can't be a guy who shows up out of nowhere with a rectangle. You have to have been a part of the community. You have to have been involved in multiple ways. And it's a fascinating world to learn. You don't pick it up immediately, but you do pick it up, uh, as you say. So, yeah, I think everything you're doing is smart. And obviously, it's paying off for you. Thank you. For, for everybody who benefits from the tours. So, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for being with us yep. for our, uh, our virtual Low Country Book Club convention. And thanks for making a little time this morning to record this with me. Thank you so much. I hope to see you again in the city or, or elsewhere down at your center. <laughs> I look forward to it. Yep. Thank you, Susie. Okay, bye. Well, Mandy, you get the extra credit because you're the only one still here. Uh, <laughs> Um, I want to say a quick thank you uh, to everybody who's participated tonight, and especially those of you who right now are so active over on the Facebook side, adding comments, saying how much you enjoyed the panel. Susie McMahon is already over there responding to them. Uh, so I would encourage you, Mandy, to maybe uh, head over there in a minute or two, too, because we got a lot of pulpwood queens who are very happy with how this panel went and really appreciate what everybody does. So Thank you again, uh, all of you, and you in particular, Mandy, since you're still here hanging out uh, for being with us tonight. I hope this was beneficial from what I've seen so far it was. And our Low Country Book Club convention continues tomorrow, Saturday, the 25th, and we'll be on and off Facebook with those events as well for those of you who can't attend in person. <laughs>